Unit 2 will be all about biodiversity or the diversity of living things. We're going to start by talking about what is biodiversity and why is it important. Biodiversity is the diversity of all life and the different forms of life. It comes in three varieties, genetic diversity, species biodiversity, and habitat diversity. And each level is important to look at because it tells us how healthy that environment is, how awesome is that environment? Can it respond to changes in the same way as another ecosystem can? All right. Genetic diversity is the lowest level. It looks at individual differences in genes. So within a species, how can they be different? So in other words, alleles. Um, what are all the different flavors of genes? More variation is always going to be better because they can withstand an environmental change much better. So let's say a disease comes through and there's a, not a lot of variation. Maybe, for instance, a crop that's all the same. They're all a monoculture, as we'll discuss. They are going to be less likely to survive that disease because they're all the same. So if one's affected, they'll all be affected. But if there's differences, there's more of a chance that someone out there will be able to fend off that disease and survive. Species diversity is the next level. It looks at how many different types of species there are. We also call this species richness. The higher the number, the more productive that environment or that ecosystem is. So in other words, more stuff that can be made through photosynthesis. The more resilient they are, the better able they are to recover from sort of disturbance. Ecosystem diversity is the highest level. It looks at how many different types of ecosystems we have, how many habitats are available, how many niches are, you know, in that environment um, for animals and plants to settle in and find their, their role. Greater number means a healthier environment. So next we're going to talk about environmental stressors. Um, so the different types of things that it can impact the environment and um, this is why it's so important to have genetic diversity because they're better able to um, respond to those stressors. And we'll also talk about a population bottleneck since that can lead to significant loss of genetic diversity. We have five different types of environmental stressors. There's climatic, so there that could mean extremes of temperature, lot, sun, wind, moisture, um, or it could mean very little. So the opposite end, very cold, very dark, um, no wind at all, no rain or precipitation. Chemical stressors are those things that, um, it could be a chemical that they need to survive and they don't have enough of it, or a chemical where really high levels are toxic. Um, so it could be damaging that environment in some way. Wildfire is pretty self-explanatory big fire, so it affects organisms by heat, the physical damage, sort of destroying those um, habitats, and also toxic substances released by the fire. Physical stressors are things that have a lot of kinetic energy, um, so maybe a volcano blowing up, a sea wave, ice scouring, or humans blowing things up, they're trampling the environment. A biological stressor is associated with interactions occurring among organisms. So that could be uh, maybe a new herbivore is in town, a new predator, parasite, there's new competition for different nutrients or moisture in space and any other resource. A population bottleneck occurs um, for various reasons, but it, it's something that kills off most of the population. So maybe there's this big tornado that went through. Uh, or a big hurricane or something like that and it cut off uh, this one little part of the population. Well we call that a bottleneck because it's like kind of pouring just a little bit through a bottle and that's it. So basically what happens is let's say our original population is very diverse but the bottleneck event occurs and then the leftover population doesn't have a lot of genetic diversity. Well, it's going to now determine the new population because only these guys have survived and will be the ones to reproduce. 
Uh, loss of habitat leads to a loss of specialist species, then followed by generalist species. Also, without a habitat, uh, it greatly impacts those organisms that have a large territorial requirement, so they need a big space, and then something has happened where they don't have that space, and then they are sad. Specialist species are those that they are, they specialize in life. They require very specific resources, they have very unique resources, um, specific diet, specific habitat. They are the most likely to become endangered or threatened or even extinct because they are so needy. They just need all the things to be just right. And if things aren't just right, they're like, well, I'm dead now. <laughs> it's depressing. For example, the tiger salamander, he's so cute. They cannot reproduce unless they live in wetland habitat that do not dry or do not dry out through the, the spring and summer. So if they can't reproduce, they don't have the babies and then their population just <laughs> dies. They also require an abundance of insects and worms for their diets. So they're, they just need all the things. Things like panda bears are another species. Pretty much all of your big mammals, um, they have very specific requirements to be alive. So that's why it's harder for them to be alive. It's very sad, actually. Journalist species are those who are like, what's up, man? I can, I can live through it all. Like raccoons. You may have noticed that you can go all over North America and find a raccoon because they can just live about anywhere, eat about anything. They're very successful, so they can have very high population numbers. So these guys are not in any danger anytime soon. All right, moving on to how we measure biodiversity. We measure it through richness and evenness. Richness refers to the number of different species found in an organism, whereas evenness refers to the relative abundance of individuals within that species. So let's look at two communities of shapes. Uh, this community one has a richness of four because it has four different types of species, whereas community two has two or th sorry three different types of species, so it has a richness of three. Uh, and then evenness, we would look at the in, like how many individuals are in each uh, within each species. And if it's relatively the same, we'd say it's pretty diverse. If, for instance, in community two, there's a large number of one species compared to other species, we'd say this is not diverse at all. So community two is in general is not by very diverse. It's only got three species. One of those species is like all over the place. So community 2 is not diverse. They're much less likely to withstand disturbances as community 1 is. Uh, and this is another example. They have the same richness, so they have the same number of different types of species, but they have different evenness. So even though they have, they both have four different types of trees, community 1 is way better because they're, they're more even. Okay, that's all. Make sure to summarize. Uh, the different levels of biodiversity and how important they are to ecosystems.